Um, now, if any of you have used the performance uh, product before, you may have noticed that this looks a little bit different um, than uh, it has in the past. Um, the thing we've added most recently, and we're iterating on this, this is an early access feature, um, but we have uh, these Web Vitals cards that have been added to the front page. And they kind of give you an at a glance view of uh, the percentage of your transactions that are either passing or failing uh, the acceptable threshold for the Web Vital. If I dive into one of these, like let's just choose First Contentful Paint, uh, it shows me kind of a, a little rundown of what the Vital is about. Um, I get the same search bar, so I can kind of slice and dice if I want to zoom in on certain things. And I see a list of my transactions and whether, uh, whether that is considered a pass or a fail. Um, let's talk a little bit about what that means. So Web Vitals is a, is a concept that Google has introduced uh, in an attempt to capture uh, a more accurate view of what the user's experience is. Uh, previously, you might rely on, say, transaction duration um, to get a sense of your performance. But you know, modern single page apps are typically uh, not, the transaction not completed before the user's already seen the page as visually complete and started to interact with it. Often there's additional resources loading in in the background. There's things that are kind of below the fold that haven't loaded in yet. Um, but we've gotten to a point of sophistication where the page is often visually complete and usable long before that. So Google has put forward this set of metrics. Um, I think there are six in the set right now. Three of them are considered core. Uh, and the first paint and first contentful paint talk about when the first elements go on the screen. So the first, sometimes they're the same if the first element is, you know, has a visual component or if it's sort of like a hidden element or an invisible element, then they might be slightly different. Um, the one that's probably more meaningful in terms of paints is the largest contentful paint. Uh, so that is, um, that is a measure of uh, when the page essentially is visually complete. So that's when the page looks loaded um, to the user. Uh, the next one, let's just go back here so we can zoom in on these. So that's the largest contentful paint. The next one is the first input delay. Um, this measures the time between when the user clicks on an element or tries to interact with the page and the page actually responds. Um, typically, if your page is interactive around the same time that your LCP has happened, the user won't attempt to interact with the page until it looks loaded. Um, and if the page is immediately responsive, then your first, first input delay will be very quick, as we see here. And the final one, which we don't have in our demo right now, but it's, it's content layout shift, uh, which describes, it's an index that measures how much things move around on the page as it loads. Um, and that's also can be kind of detrimental to the user experience. If you're reading a paragraph of text and then it suddenly moves and you lose your place or you try to kick, click on a button and just as you click it shifts over. Uh, I don't know if you've ever had that experience, but I certainly have and it can be, it can be kind of annoying. So with that uh, set of metrics, Google uh, has instrumented their browsers. So the Chrome and Chromium browsers um, to collect that information. And the other interesting development is they've also announced that the core web vitals are going to be factored into the page rank algorithm. So it's something that I think a lot of folks are going to, you know, have a lot more attention on in the future. So I think we'll be hearing more about them. Um, but this is one of the reasons why we wanted to make sure that we had a view of them and we're kind of making that data readily available to you. There's a couple of ways to see those. We've seen I can dive in and get kind of the overview page across all my transactions. I could also, if we go back into the tool store application, come into the web vital screen here. So this gives me for this particular transaction, uh, a detailed view into uh, my different web vitals, whether they're pass fail. The pass fail threshold is defined in the web vitals um, sort of spec. And the way it works is there's a baseline here called out on each graph. That baseline is just the P75. So it's the, it's the time that 75% of, of transactions are faster than and 25% are slower than. Um, that, that P75 baseline is what's used to determine pass or fail. Uh, and then there are three ranges, uh, but there's, there's, a, there's a poor range, which for first paint and first contentful paint starts at three seconds. So that's the failure, failure threshold of saying basically performance is acceptable up to three seconds. Once, one, once these exceed three seconds, um, that's not considered a pass. And then for largest contentful paint, it's four seconds. So again, this shows you sort of an at a glance view, you know, where your P75 is, whether you're kind of in the red zone or not, uh, whether it's a pass fail, 
And I can also zoom in and get a, a, a more focused view. So if I want to have a look at kind of what's going on there, if I want to check out, you know, this, this secondary mode uh, on this page, there's kind of a couple of different, so there's a, there's a major mode and a minor mode here, and I can kind of look in and see what's going on there um, and get a sense of what's happening with my web vitals. Uh, I just want to draw your attention to there's also an open and discover button. We're going to come to discover a little bit later uh, in the demo, but we can kind of drill through from here and we'll come back to that in a bit. Um, the next piece that I wanted to draw your attention to is, is on the homepage itself. So there's a little bit of customizability here. We've got a couple of at a glance graphs that sort of show an overview across all the transactions. Um, right now I'm focused on the on this particular front end react project if I want to see across all my projects I can switch the filter bar and get a wider view. I can choose what I want to see here and there's a few different options so I can see my app decks or I can see my failure rate based on the on the uh, transaction status that's returned. Uh, or I can see different duration breakdowns. So if I want to see my median duration across all the different transactions or my P95 etc. I can I can get all those overviews. Um, I can search here as well. So if I want to, you know, if I want to see a cut across all my um, transactions, but I want to see it, you know, just for the Chrome browser, uh, then I can do that sort of thing. Um, and I can also do cross cuts with custom tags. So if I want to see, you know, if I'm interested in focusing in, say, on uh, enterprise customers then I can do that and just get a view in and see sort of what do my web vitals look like? What do my at a glance views look like for that segment? Uh, and then lastly, down here, we have the list of transactions that we've been working with. This is sorted by default on uh, transactions per minute. So the how many transactions Sentry has seen for that, or how many transaction events Sentry has seen for that transaction, um, you know, per minute type of thing, the, the rate at which they're coming in. Uh, and you get kind of a roll up of your P50, P95, the different views that you can see here, as well as unique users, uh, and again, user misery. The other piece I wanna draw your attention to is those key transactions. So these are basically just bookmarks, but I've pinned the interesting transactions to the top. So regardless of the sort I choose, and if I wanna look at different sorts, I can sort by different things, but the, the key transactions will come to the top for me so I can kind of focus on the most important ones if there are particular ones I care about. 